Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ, and we're back today with another random episode challenge. If you don't know what this series is about, then you can check out the other episodes, they'll be linked in the description below. Basically, we choose a random episode of the anime, and then take on the toughest trainer in a given game using the first six Pokemon seen in the chosen episode. The number generated was 105, which corresponds with Once in a More While, or to give it its Japanese name, Falling in Love with Kachit, Hasubrero's Flower Arrangement. Why are their names always so much better? Anyway, we get our first team member right away as Brock, Ash, May, and Max sit at a picnic table with Pikachu. Numbers 2 and 3 aren't far behind as Ash challenges Brock to a battle and we see Torkoal take on Lombre. The battle ends with Torkoal firing Lombre into the distance where he encounters our fourth Pokemon. The mole that he runs into in the forest is owned by Samantha, and obviously Brock is immediately breaking out the smoothest of pickup lines. How perceptive of you, my dear, the Lombre is mine! My name? It's Brock. Tell me, what's yours? Oh, well, my name is Samantha. Samantha? A name that stands for a thousand Pokémon! It turns out Moel has a crush on Lombre, but those feelings aren't mutual. Brock tries convincing Lombre because he thinks he'll have a better chance with Samantha if his Pokémon shows some interest. Come here, Lombre! <laughs> See, we're just a little shy. Please forgive us. Anyway, it would never work out. Moile and Lombre don't even share a breeding group. Samantha shows off the ribbon routine she does with Moile, and as our protagonists watch on, we get our final two Pokemon. Plodding away in the distance, Jesse and James are joined by Meowth and Wobbuffet. So, that's our six. We may as well finish the episode at this point, though. Team Rocket attempts to steal more while, but she's rescued by Ash's Corefish, who, unlike Lombre, shows plenty of affection towards her. Unfortunately, like Brock, Corefish is forced to walk the road of romantic rejection. That night, Samantha and Mowile are due to perform in town, but they're interrupted by Team Rocket again. Jesse and James attempt to grab the steel type, but through Survivor's Haze, they steal the wrong Pokemon. After a nice nap, there's nothing like a Lombre staring at you in the face. <sighs> Lombre and Mowile team up to get rid of Team Rocket for a second time, and the night is saved as Samantha and her Pokemon partner make it back in time to perform. While they're on stage, Lombre goes through Samantha's bag and finds a Water Stone. This helps him evolve into a, um... Um... What do you call it? Thank you, that's the one. Ludicolo joins the performance, and the crowd loves it. The episode ends with Mowile rejecting Ludicolo, followed by Brock and his newly evolved Pokemon happy dancing to overcome the pain of rejection. So that was once in a Mowile. Let's have a look at the Pokemon we'll be using, and the ones we'll be facing. Our team for this episode will be made up of Pikachu, Torkoal, Lombre, Mowile, Meowth, and Wobbuffet. With an average base stat total of 364, we're just slightly worse off than the baby Pokemon Magby. Steven's team has an average base stat total of 514 so right in between Steelix and Gallade. Seems pretty even. Well, we know the Pokemon we need, so let's go get them. In the Hoenn Safari Zone, we find ourselves a Wobbuffet, who's sure to be fun to grind up. Then, after lots of searching, we pick up a Pikachu for good measure. Then we had to Route 116 to catch a Skitty. I know that wasn't one of the first Pokemon seen in the episode, but the only way to get a Meowth in Pokemon Emerald is to trade for it. At the Battle Frontier, we meet this woman who's looking for a... What? Guys, I swear I did not know. I did not mean to send my Skitty to Isis. Oh my god, this is not good PR. At, at least I rescued a Meowth. Called me a wow. Oh, and he, he's holding some mail. Thank you for Skitty. Meowth cries in a cute way. From Isis. Jesus Christ, let's just move on. On Route 114, we catch a Lombre, and then fly to the fiery path to get ourselves a Torkoal. With five of our six team members in our party, we travel to Victory Road in search of the best Pokemon ever. Obviously, we use our Master Ball to catch Mawile, because that's what he deserves. With our whole team assembled, we just need to grind everyone up. This is truly the fun part. Once we're all done with that, we head to Meteor Falls with our team looking like this. Pikachu is at level 77 with Quick Attack, Double Team, Slam, and Thunderbolt. Torkoal's level 78 with Flamethrower, Amnesia, Iron Defense, and Body Slam. At level 76, Lombre has Surf, Thief, Waterfall, and Blizzard. Mawile's also at 76, with Crunch, Iron Defense, Baton Pass, and Fire Blast. Meowth's at 75, with Slash, Screech, Iron Tail, and Faint Attack. Finally, our Wobbuffet is at level 76, with Counter, Mirror Coat, Safeguard, and Destiny Bond. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Just in case you're new to my random episode challenges, this'll be a set battle with no items allowed. 
Stephen Stone sends out Skarm Reaper starter, signaling his steely scheme. At 77 with Spike, Steel Wing, Aerial Ace, and Toxic, he's sure to be a tough opponent. I don't know why I wrote it that way. That was really weird. I'm a weird person. Anyway, we're leading off with Pikachu, so we have a major advantage here. Our first Thunderbolt takes Skarmory below half health, and Steelwing doesn't do enough to worry us. A second Thunderbolt knocks out Steven's first Pokemon and forces him to bring in Akron. At level 76, the Steel Rock type has a seriously varied moveset. Varied, but bizarre. With Thunder, Earthquake, Solar Beam, and Dragon Claw, three quarters of his moves are special, which really doesn't work in his favour. With the set battle style, there's almost no point in switching out, so we stay in and hit one Thunderbolt, which deals a good chunk of damage. One Earthquake is too much for our Pikachu to handle though, so now she's a dead mouse. I'd reference a dead mouse song here, but I don't know any, so let's talk about Lombre instead. Agron outspeeds us, but he's charging up his Solar Beam, so we're free to fire off a Surf and KO the Steel Bladed Rock Monster. Steven sends out his level 76 Armaldo next, and there's no point in switching now. Surf takes the fossil Pokemon below half health, but Aerial Ace pays us back in kind. Still, a second Surf does the job and stones down to 3. Clay Doll's fourth, and even though it's quicker than Lombre, its Earthquake is pretty pathetic. Lombre takes another Pokemon into one-shot range, and after living through a second Earthquake, her trusty Surf finishes off a third Pokemon. Steven's Ace Metagross is out next, and one Meteor Mash finally stops Lombre. She swept through half of Steven's team though. Legendary performance. We opt for Meowile the Meowth next. We got him from... It, it doesn't matter where. I found him. He's dead now anyway. Are you happy? Torkoal comes in next, and I was honestly shocked that Metagross's super effective Earthquake wasn't even good for half health. Torkoal shows Steven what a real super effective move looks like, taking Metagross down to 1 HP with Flamethrower. A berry and a full restore to the trick for Steven, who clearly doesn't care about the rules we set out. He's kind of screwed though. From full health, the flamethrower takes his Metagross into the red, so it's just a matter of time. After a couple of full restores, we get a burn that finishes off the pseudo legendary and takes Steven Stone down to one. His final Pokemon is Cradley, and although I'm sure Torkoal has enough in the tank to finish this, I like to use my whole team in these battles. So, we bring in Wobbuffet to watch Cradley using Grain, and then switch out to Mawile because I hadn't come up with a plan yet. We use an Iron Defense, and then after getting confused, we Baton Pass out to Wobbuffet. Doesn't make a ton of sense because I'm baton passing confusion to him, but it's okay. This sort of feels cruel at this point, we're just toying with him. Straight away we throw out a Destiny Bond because I think I thought it was Parish Song, then I realised it wasn't, so proceeded to mirror coat him down to red health, and even though he healed up, Destiny Bond can't be broken. Cradley knocks out Wobbuffet with Giga Drain and is dragged to the grave by his fallen foe. And that's all she wrote. Steven Stone is beaten, fairly easily too. That does it for today's episode. Now, I would like to do one in 5th gen, but I'll probably wait until I've done another challenge in Black and White or Black and White 2, so I've got a few things to ask. Firstly, do you want to pick one of Red, Blue, Cynthia, or Steven for the next random episode challenge, or should I just leave all of the first four gens of the anime open and pick whoever is most appropriate? Secondly, do you want me to take the Pokemon that always appear out of the running, or should I stick with the first six Pokemon no matter what? I'm talking about Pikachu, Togepi, Meowth, Piplup, the ones that are just always on hand. Finally, do you prefer the random episode challenges with the episode summaries or without? I just want to make the content that you guys want to watch, and your feedback is the easiest way for me to figure that out. I think that's it for now, you can leave your answers in the comments, or tweet me at EnterTheUnknown, or hell, you can come to Ireland and tell me. It's not that big, you'll find me quickly enough. Okay, sorry for the long outro, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.